Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Modern day Alabama and Mississippi. Did I get that right? Oh good, I finally got that right in a video. 1795. Back then, Alabama and Mississippi didn't exist yet. This area was actually part of Georgia, kind of. It was an area known as the Yazoo Lands, named after the Yazoo Nation. The Georgia legislature divided up the Yazoo Lands into four tracts and then sold each tract to a different land development company for $500,000 each, which ended up being about a penny per acre or about 32 cents per acre in today's money. Well, I'd say that was a pretty good deal, dang. Yeah, but whistleblowers later revealed that Georgia politicians, including the governor himself, George Matthews, only sold all this land so cheaply because they, they were, were bribed, bribed to, to do, do so. so. Once voters found out about the bribes, they voted out anyone even remotely involved in the scandal and demanded the new legislature repeal the law that approved of the land deal. The new legislature did get rid of the land deal, declaring all claims made under it no good. Heck, the new legislature even burned almost all remaining copies of the original land deal. That's a... Uh... That was a bit dramatic, don't you think? Regardless, the whole ordeal was not over. While Georgia had refunded money to its citizens who had already bought portions of the Yazoo lands, some straight up refused the money, preferring to hold on to their land. However, Georgia no longer recognized their claims and this created a bit of a mess in the courts for several years. Enter two veteran land speculators named Robert Fletcher and John Heck. The two conspired together to challenge the legal system in order to profit from some of their portions of the Yazoo lands they were holding on to. They both agreed that Fletcher would sue Peck with Fletcher claiming that when he had bought the tract of land in the Yazoo lands from Peck in 1795, he was misled to believe that Peck really did own the land. Therefore, the sale was invalid since the land deals had been repealed the following year. Fletcher's lawsuit against Peck didn't happen until 1803. In the suit, Fletcher argued the United States owned the land due to the presence of Native Americans in the region. Peck argued the land was actually owned by Georgia. So where did the collusion come in? Well, no matter how the courts decided, they just needed to prove that Native Americans didn't legally own the land. In other words, it didn't matter whether Georgia or the United States owned the land. As long as it wasn't Native American land, most importantly, both Fletcher and Peck just wanted wanted to confirm that they could own their land. I mean, come on. The land would help them become, like, filthy rich. The Federal Circuit Court for the District of Georgia ruled in favor of Peck, and so Fletcher appealed to the Supreme Court. The court heard oral arguments throughout 1809 and 1810. High-profile lawyers came in to argue for Peck, like future Supreme Court Justice Joseph Story and future President President John Quincy Adams, Fletcher, who again was okay losing this case, brought in a lawyer named Luther Martin, who actually delayed arguments multiple times because he kept showing up very drunk. Simply put, the court had to determine whether or not the contract between Fletcher and Peck could be canceled by Georgia's legislature. The court announced their decision on March 16th, 1810. They indeed sided with Peck. It was four to one. They argued that yes, Georgia owned the land, but no, it could not repeal its previous land grants because that went against Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, of the United States Constitution, which is also known simply as the, the Contract, Contract Clause. Therefore, the sale between Fletcher and Peck was a binding contract, and Georgia had to recognize it. Now, the courts did acknowledge that the fraud underlying the land grants were pretty bad, but it said Peck was an innocent third party who got the land in good faith. 
After all, he wasn't one of the dudes accepting bribes. Fletcher v. Peck was the first case in which the Supreme Court ruled a state law was unconstitutional. The decision also established a strong precedent for the importance of contracts. More specifically, the decision further cemented the protection of property rights. Over the next several decades, it established a big obstacle for the state regulation of private companies. Unfortunately, the decision also introduced another precedent. Native Americans did not hold the complete title to their own lands. And so who won the case? Fletcher v. Peck? Fletcher and Peck. Oh, snap. I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. Fletcher v. Peck is an extremely important Supreme Court case that few people actually know about, so I highly recommend that you watch this video about it. Come to think of it, you probably already have, since this is the end of the video, but regardless, uh, thanks for watching. Hey, which Supreme Court case should I cover for this series next? Let me know down below. Also, I wrote a book about the Supreme Court. Hello, a book?